Hold up. This isn't some cheesy kid show. This is Kids in the Tank, a young perspective on business from high school students. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Kids in the Tank. Today, we are honored to have Mark Sakowitz in the studio with us. Mark has been Divisional Footwear Sales Manager at Nike, President and General Manager at Smartwool, General Manager at Toms of Americas, and currently sits on the board of the Outdoor Industry Association. Mark, you are officially in the hot seat. So Mark, it's Jenna here. Um, rumor has it that back in the day, you and our creator of Biz Tank, Jeff Peterson, played Little League Baseball against each other. So tell us the truth. Were you guys any good? <laughs> <laughs> we, we did play baseball against each other, and I think we were both pretty good. So, yeah. Are you sure? Because, <laughs> I mean, Jeff. Jeff, we've seen know. Jeff. <laughs> and we know Jeff played football. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, well, with all your involvement in a competitive cycling group, can you tell us in that if that in any way has crossed over into how you handle your day-to-day -day business? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I think cycling or any sport um, uh, influence your day-to-day -day business in a in a structured way, in a disciplined way. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you want to stay active um, while you're working, which I highly recommend, um, you've got to prioritize it and you've got to put it into your day. So I think it helps with time management. I think it um, um, it, it helps you think. And uh, it's, a, it's a good part of every day for me. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Mark? This is Oscar. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Not going to get any feedback this time, are you? <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're doing good. All right. I got a question for you. I want to know what is work like on a day to day basis as a CEO? And how is that different from your work as a general manager? Um, well, you know, as a CEO, um, you're responsible for the entire business. As a general manager, you're most likely responsible for uh, a part of it at some level, even though it's a, a very large job. But but um, day to day in both roles, um, it really comes down to uh, managing and checking in with the, uh, your team. Um, making sure that they're aligned on what we want to get done for the day or the week or the month or the year. Does it, put, does it align towards our strategy in the near term and long term? And then are we doing it efficiently and effectively to where, you know, the business can be most successful? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a CEO or a general manager, you don't do, let's say, a lot of the tactical day-to-day -day work. For example, you're not, you're not analyzing the business um, per se, you're working through your team to identify what's going on with the business and then coaching and counseling them um, to make better decisions. Awesome. And Mark, if you don't mind me asking, I want to know which one you preferred, GM or CEO? Yeah, I prefer the CEO for sure. Um, you know, it, from the, in that, and I think I was better at it, uh, mm. candidly, because what I was learning in my career is that um, strategy and culture which are the two primary areas of ownership for the CEO, mm -hmm. um, were my areas of strength. And, um, you know, when I went to Tom's, it was, uh, it was a lesser job um, for a bigger company mm -hmm. um, in regards to responsibility. But, um, you know, we moved there for a variety of reasons that weren't just um, for, for that job. But, but one of the primary was because I wanted to help more people. And it was the best company in the world to help more people. So I was willing to do that regardless really of what um, uh, maybe my my ownership level was in leading that uh, company in totality. Yeah, that's fantastic. Definitely a point that you have to think about when you're pursuing a job opportunity. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> hey, Mark, it's Marissa here. Um, I was wondering if... Hi. I was wondering if you had any mentors to help navigate you through your business career. Yeah, I, I sure did. And if I didn't, I would have failed. 
Um, I think that's one of the biggest parts that I could relate to anyone is you got to find some people that you trust, that you respect, mm -hmm. that you can have honest one-on-one -on -one dialogue with when things are going good and bad, mm -hmm. and then truly, truly listen to them um, when when uh, they see something that you may not think uh, matters or is wrong. Um, because perception in, in our business is reality, right? So if somebody thinks mm -hmm, things yes. aren't going well, then they're not. <laughs> and you've got to solve for that. So I, uh, I've, I've relied on a couple of people at a significant level over my career um, to help me get better, to help me improve, to help me see things in a different way than maybe I was seeing them. And those conversations have always helped me do a better job. That's awesome. And if you don't mind me asking, how do you go about getting a mentor yourself? Does it just come to you or do you have to go seek that person out? I think for me, it was authentic and mm. that it virally kind of happened. Like most of the mentors I had were people I had once worked for, where then I had moved through my career and I stayed in close contact with them because they were probably had done the job I was now in mm -hmm. and they could have a, a good perspective on, you know, maybe some of the things I need to look out for mm -hmm. um, or learn. And so uh, I think you can also reach out. You know, I have a bunch of people here in LA um, that have learned what I do for a living or what my career is. And they've asked for advice for help. And I think that takes some courage, but what I think most people should learn is that people that, um, uh, have accomplished a lot and truly um, want to lead are happy to spend time coaching and counseling others so they can be successful. It, mm -hmm. It's actually a, a pride point for people like that. Um, and so I, I welcome it all the time. So Mark, um, what do you think that the best advice that you were given was? The best advice that I was ever given um, uh, was that nothing has been possible. You can do anything. You just got to put your mind to it. Um, and, I, and I think I'm a good case study there. Um, yep. You know, I, I completely changed my career path direction from my core schooling and from where I started. Um, every time I had an instinct, I should do something different. I went with it. And then I worked really, really hard to make sure it happened. So I think, honestly, um, you know, nothing is impossible and you can control what you can control, right? And don't worry about the things you can't mm -hmm. because they don't matter. They're going to happen anyway, right? So how can you control your actions or what your influence or your sphere of influence is um, to make the situation as good as possible? I think those are a couple of angles for sure. Well, I think we just got really good advice, too. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> um, so, Mark, uh, you spent a portion of your career with Nike and most recently Tom's. Um, both footwear, yeah. but, <clears throat> sorry, both footwear, but clearly go to different consumers. What was the most difficult yeah. part of the transition um, to a different customer? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, the, the diff most difficult part of the, the Tom's thing for me was that I'm – an athlete by nature, and I relate much more um, passionately to sports or athletics than I do to casual footwear. And mm -hmm. so um, I had to learn that business. And it's not that one or the other is better. Um, but uh, if you, if I was more of a fashionista or somebody who really spent a lot of my day thinking about that, I think Tom's would have been easier and Nike would have been harder, for example. Yeah. Right. So I think, uh, you know, for me, the Tom's thing was more challenging because that wasn't my, you know, the core of what I really love. But, um, but uh, you can learn either. Yeah, it's a saying, writers write what they know, and I guess you sell what you know, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Very true. Hey, Mark, I got a question for you. Yeah. I really, I really want to know, when you were working at Nike, did you ever resell shoes that are from Nike? Did you always have fresh kicks on or no? <laughs> <laughs> I always had pretty new Nike shoes on. Always. Hey, attaboy. There you uh, go. Way to sport the brand. And, and, I, and, and I still wear Nike every day today. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Still representing. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, Mark. So since you've worked for a variety of companies that are like huge brand names, in a competitive retail world, can you tell us how challenging it might be to like balance your own integrity and ethics with like a business that's so goal oriented? Like I know Tom's has a certain ethics that they like to follow, but do you find it difficult to manage those two things in business? No, not at all. No. Um, as a matter of fact, if if you don't operate with integrity and credibility and authenticity every second of the day, candidly, I have a problem with you. Mm -hmm. So I, I would never compromise anything uh, for any reason. Um, I would work hard. I would compete uh, to win the business, but I would always do it in a, in a proactive, uh, credible, and authentic course, yeah. way. And... Um, no, I think it's actually quite easy, and and I've seen some suspect activity over the years, and I absolutely, uh, vehemently shoot it down uh, immediately. Of course, yeah. This is how you were talking earlier that uh, if somebody gets an inkling of something going wrong, your business is doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, Mark. So now we've thank you for answering our questions first off. Yeah, thank and you so much. now we're going to move into our next segment, which is Flip It, where you will be asking us questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, anything that comes you, off the top of your head. What, Cut you off guard. So I can do anything I want? Anything you want. Yep. Okay. I guess I don't, and I don't, I don't have any one of you to specifically. I'll just throw it out, and maybe each of you takes the question. But, but I would I would say the first thing that I wanted one I really am curious of is as you, I mean, you guys are involved in this. It's really really um, inspiring to me that you're you're operating at this level of maturity. What got you into wanting to be part of a program like this? What I mean, was it a teacher? Was it your parents? Was it um, your own personal ambition, but but maybe give me some insights to how you got involved. Well, for me, I just wanted to join it because, well, I never wanted to know what I wanted to do with my life, but come to realize it, I want to be a CIA agent, and I joined BizTank because I'm thinking that BizTank will help me get there. I want to know the steps to take so mm -hmm. I can be what I want to be in life. Yeah, that's true. Oh, true. Yeah. I, I was kind of pushed for, by my uh, business ed teacher, Ms. Slauson, and then once I got to know Jeff and Mark, I wanted to continue on the track of doing this sort of thing. Not only because it's like good technical experience, it, take the podcast for example, it's a wonderful professional experience that I don't think I could have got anywhere else but in an environment that, like in BizTank that you don't see very often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. My business teacher, Ms. Slauson, now Ms. Mm -hmm. Levko, she pushed us to joined the program and I had a broad idea of what I wanted to do, but you know, this program will open me up to, you know, thinking on what maybe I haven't even thought of doing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I've always been really into business. I do an FBLA club, which is Future Business Leaders of America. Mm -hmm. And one day my brother came home from work because he works at Geneva Supply and he was like, there's this great new program that you should do. And so then I talked to Jeff and here I am. Yeah, no, it's neat, and I think uh, the the one thing I'd add to that is, one, I think it's great, and secondly, I think that it's it's really productive to get your mind thinking about what you want to, what you want to do, or what you want to pursue, or how you want to kickstart your advanced degree, or whatever it would be. My only advice is that it can and will most likely be fluid, right, and mm -hmm. and yeah. always be open to what those changes may be. Um, you know, for me, um, you know, I my career evolved over time, and it was interesting because I thought I was good at something, and it turned out I was better at something else. Mm -hmm. And then I found I was better at even something different than that. And um, it, it was uh, it was really a, a great learning experience for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a it's kind of a universal <laughs> right. theme, yeah. but right. So then I guess my next question for you guys is that as you're going into college, because um, I'm assuming that you're all intending on going um, uh, as a core assumption, but uh, what are your biggest concerns as you leave home and you go and take that next step? My biggest concern, honestly, is the paying for it and the student loans. 
<laughs> Hoping to not be yeah. in debt yeah, my yeah. whole life. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to be in debt. <laughs> the yeah. acceptance, yeah. <laughs> I, I would say for myself, um, one of my biggest concerns is how I'm going to fit in in a different environment. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, afraid of going to a new place, but I think that being, especially where we live, where it's, it's a good community. It really is. Mm-hmm. And we've been here for so long. Going on the next step of the journey is kind of scary. I can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm worried about yeah, like, I, I, how over the years college keeps getting more expensive. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Scary. Especially if you want to go to somewhere like Madison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah, that seems thematically um, to be, uh, it's always been an issue, but it seems like it's even more at the forefront. What's your guys' take? on your future opportunities post-college. Do you guys have great confidence that you'll be able to find a great job and have a great career, or do you have trepidation there as well? You know, personally, I think that with an education, you can find at least something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, personally, I, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I should be a little bit more, but I don't know. I think, like you were saying, uh, it depends how hard you want to work on it, you know? Right. And there's, yeah. there's always going to be, like, a demand for business, you know. Mm. In yeah, my opinion, I'm... There's a demand. Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Uh... In my opinion, <laughs> I'm not really scared about getting a job because the, what I want to go into requires a lot of field experience before you can advance in anything else. Okay. So it's just going to be some time, right? Yeah. But... Time, you got to put... The one thing I've observed with, you know, millennials, and you guys are a click below that as far as the generation, but uh, there, there is, um, there is less desire to really, I think, put, commit your entire being to your, to being great um, when mm-hmm. you get one of these jobs. And the people I saw that were, wanted to work hard, um, that controlled their own destiny and um, did all that uh, were the ones who were most successful by far. And and they also stood out from the, the crowd. So mm-hmm. I would highly recommend that you work hard, you put your mind to it, you do the right thing, um, you'll stand out and, and it will enable you to, to, to get to where you want to be. I, I know that for sure. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, that's great advice. Awesome. Any other questions for us? Who do you like better, the Green Bay Packers or the Chicago Bears? Uh, Packers. Bears. Yeah, Bears. no, Bears fan. All right. Bears. Bears. Gotta go with it because I was born there. All right. I'm leaving. All right. All I'm saying is we're closer to Chicago than we are to Green Bay. Okay. But were I you totally born in Wisconsin? Agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, tough to, to be a Packer fan. Gotta be a Bear fan. It's, it's <laughs> tough to be a Bear fan with your record. Hello. Oh boy, but yeah. how can you how can you wear green and gold and be proud? You yeah. know? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> how? Mm, yeah. I okay. Nope. Jenna, your face is getting kind of red. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a diehard Packer fan, so this is just I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, are you a Bears fan? I know you're from Chicago. I, I am a lifelong Chicago sports fan, and All I right. love the right. Chicago. Even even when they're uh, even when they're bad, makes victory sweeter. Right? Every time, yep. When have you so been? so, Trubisky or Glennon? Trubisky. Of course, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was just checking. I was just checking. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta go. You got you draft him number two. You gotta go with him. Oh yeah, no, I completely agree. <laughs> right. <laughs> Any guys with more than anything else for us, Mark? No, I think that's good. Those are great answers. Thank you, Mark. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us on the phone. Uh, we appreciate your insight, everyone here. Thank really you so much. Thank you so much. So I'm glad we got to talk yeah. to you. We thought you were so cool, honestly. You're yeah. laid back. I, even though you're a Bear fan. <laughs> yeah, even though. <laughs> I, th- I think we can all say here, we really accredit you with being very humble for how well you've done for yourself, and we think that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. Yep. yep. Well, Thank- thanks again. A lot of-
people are helping. So thanks, guys. I yep. really yep. appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. the best. Bye. All right, another quick shout out to Mark for being our guest on Kids on the Tank. Uh, before we continue with our last segment, the roundtable, here's a word from our sponsors because this isn't all free. We wish it was. Wish it was. <laughs> Prestige Paints is changing the way you buy paint. We're the number one selling brand of interior and exterior paint on Amazon.com. And with the help of our app, Prestige Color Pick, we're making paint buying a whole lot easier. With the app, you can take a picture of your wall and then virtually paint it with any of our 2,400 plus colors. And now you can try our competitors' colors on your walls too. Once you find a color you love, you can purchase it from Amazon right through the app, saving yourself a trip to the store. Prestige Color Pick is free and available through the App Store and Google Play. Live colorfully and design your life with Prestige. Hi, this is Mike Butler with Elkhorn Chemical and Packaging. We've been in business for 65 years. We're located in Wisconsin. We represent the janitorial, packaging, safety, and maintenance categories. We sell to small businesses all the way to large corporations. So, if you're in need of a cleanup in aisle 9, give us a call at 800-377-3556 or check us out at elkhornchemical.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Kids in the Tank. We are now entering our third and final segment, The Roundtable, where we will be talking about today's hot topics and trends from a teen's perspective. Woohoo. All right, so Delvin, my high school, just had our homecoming week. When is your guys' homecoming week? Our homecoming week was last week. Yeah, last we had week. the same time as you. Some of the dress up days? Did you have anything? Do you do dress up days? Any cool traditions? We had toga day, senior toga day. We had colors, pajama day. Just basic homecoming. We had superhero and supervillain day. What did you dress up as? Superman. Superwoman. Super yeah, we also had character Su day. Super Jenna. Super, Super Jenna. Jenna. <laughs> Always. Super Jenna. I'm my own superhero. I had that beach day. We're in the tank tops. Tank top day. All right. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out. Sun's out, guns out. Tank top Tuesday? What? Was that on Tuesday? Oh, boy. But homecoming week, boys of fall, we're winding down. Starbucks, new fall drinks. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Never really been a big fan of Starbucks. Really? Honestly, Dunkin' Donuts. Is... Honestly, I've never liked the pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan. I love the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> <laughs> I love the okay, smell. But have you heard about the maple pecan latte? Is that the new one? Oh, yeah. That's the new one coming out? I am so excited. Yeah, because... that sounds pretty interesting, but honestly, don't I don't think mean, it would fit my taste buds. If I drank coffee, I'd probably like it. I maybe. guess maybe. Coffee is so good. I don't know how you can survive high school without coffee like every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good job. More Homecoming week oh, football, man. NFL football rivalries, Bears so, Packers. Bears Packers, Packers game last week. Oh my gosh, can we talk about the hit on Devonte Adams? I mean, that is such. <laughs> we can talk about it. I don't want like that was so bad. Yeah, that was pretty dirty. And I'm a Bears fan, and I'm gonna say, <sighs> sorry. It was very. You guys have enough players hurt already. I know our injury list is like longer than the Bears championship Losing list. Yeah. <laughs> oh Ooh. yeah, that too. <laughs> oh boy. It doesn't take much. I mean, yeah, you're right. Well, you just counter your own argument. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> I'm, do you see my hair color? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Um, so, something sad like the Bears record. Tom Oof. Petty passed away recently. Legend, and legend. It legend. actually broke my heart a little bit. Do you guys know who Tom Petty is? Yeah, Sings yeah, Free Fallen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker. Uh, <laughs> broke my heart one last time when he passed away. <laughs> like, I grew up listening to him, and it was, like, losing a part of my childhood. Oh, that's kind of sad. Yeah, I know. Big rock fan, though? Mm hmm Yeah. Rock, rap, and country. You, you do it <laughs> all. Rap and I country. <laughs> Listen to just classical rap. studies. Just you, uh, just rap, Oscar? Just rap. Really? Yeah. Who's right. your favorite rapper? My favorite rapper would be probably Gucci Mane. Oh, no. All right, I like I'll, I'll, I'll like say I'm an alternative like... fan, and that, that we'll round it out. <laughs> All right. I guess you're okay. Speaking of childhoods, Drake and Josh, they're reunited again. Oh, my gosh. Hug me, brother. Hug me, brother. Yeah. Brothers again. That was my favorite show growing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, SpongeBob? SpongeBob? SpongeBob. Oh. Great. Jimmy Neutron? Jimmy Neutron. Oh, Fantastic. Danny, Danny Phantom. Danny, Danny Phantom. Oh, yeah. But honestly, Drake and Josh, I'm so happy that they're friends again because after the entire wedding scandal. What? I, explain? Um... Basically, I forgot which one was the one that got married. I think it, 
I oh, think it was the tall one. Josh. 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 <laughs> Josh got married and didn't invite Drake to the wedding. Oh, oh no. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's was, rough. But they're back together? They're reunited? Yep, they're reunited. I was reading about it, and Drake felt like he was losing a brother. Because yeah. that's his brother. <laughs> like me, brother. Yeah. It's like you and me, Oscar. Yeah, it's like brothers. Seth. Yeah. Brothers. <laughs> you guys look exactly alike. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of siblings celebrity we, news yeah honestly oh, chloe kardashian and kylie jenner they're both pregnant oh, honestly man. not the biggest surprise why yeah. is that honestly it feels like lately the kardashians are just being baby boomers like next thing you know <laughs> kim, oh. kim is gonna be in the magazine with uh her new kid southeast, southeast. Yeah. southeast. <laughs> that's good that's good man yeah oh man, oh, man. always in the news <laughs> right speaking of in the news End of the world. We survived another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it got yeah. postponed. It got, yeah. wait, tell me. So it was supposed to be September 23rd, and now it got moved to October 21st. Yep, October 21st. Yeah. So Less than a month. Uh, yeah. What are we going to do? I don't know. I, I guess... remember 2012. Whew. I didn't <laughs> sure think, made it through that one. I didn't think I was going to be make it to my teens. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you'd be 13. When I found out, I actually oh, I cried, but, you know, I got over it. Here I am. We were little. <laughs> here I am, yeah, right? Yeah. And the here. world don't think it's that near. Well, no, hopefully. Hopefully. You know who pretends like it's the end of the world all the time? Millennials. I can say that because uh, yeah. we can say that because we're Generation oh, yeah. Z. What's up? <laughs> but honestly, a lot of times they blame us for the end of the world. Yeah, but industries are actually blaming millennials for the end of the world because they're destroying the industries. Fair or unfair? It's pretty fair. You think it's fair? Honestly, like with the recession that went on in 2008, I think that the millennials are very cautious on how they don't spend their money. <laughs> don't spend it? So yeah. they're kind of uh, yeah. they stunting don't the economy a little bit? Yeah. They don't really uh, move out of their parents' house. They don't go out to I, eat as much. Yeah, I, I, can't, like, I can't speak for millennials, but I can speak for us, Generation Z. I think we're one of the more entrepreneurial mm-hmm. generations. Yep. It, it makes it easier. Internet, obviously. And programs like Biz Tank, shout out to Jeff Peterson. Yeah. And Mark Becker. And Mark, right. Becker. and Mark Becker. Generation Z has a lot of drive. Yeah. And you know, millennials don't we'll have succeed. that as much. Here we are, great podcast. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're learning from their mistakes. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. <True. laughs> Honestly. Speaking of mistakes. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Are you gonna hit me with, you know you're surrounded by Bears fans, right? <laughs> Cubs fans, too. The Cubs won the National League. Uh, uh, National League Central. National League Central. Sorry. Uh, about to be World Series. Don't worry about um, it. Definitely. We're going to no. get there. We're gonna get there. I, I refuse to Pound believe. Pound it, brother, right here. I Boom. refuse to believe it. that they're actually going to win two years in a row. But... You don't think so? How are the Brewers doing? Okay, that's the end of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, indeed. Uh, you, you can have the Packers. Let us have the Cubs. Yeah. We definitely. each have one good team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Another breaking news. It. What do you guys think? Have you seen oh it? I haven't it seen good. it. I want to see it, was it good. so it bad. Was. Me too. You guys haven't seen it? No. I've seen the trailers and it seems loved really it. interesting. I liked it a lot. I loved it. It was really good. So, I mean, it was scary and the plot was so good. Did you guys Just see the plot itself? Did you see the original one? I did, I did. not. I didn't. I still have it on VHS. How does it compare to the new one? Well, I like <laughs> how the old one, it actually showed the whole part, but in the, the new one, 2017, it's a little bit cut down. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. At, at the end, it said chapter one. I'm like, <laughs> so, yes. How many chapters come. are there? More to come. <laughs> More to come. I started, I started reading the book, but I'm not very far in it yet. Well, do you know how many chapters are in the book? I don't think they're doing it <laughs> chapter by movie, but if they 98 are. 98 movies on eight. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Halloween movie by far is definitely Hocus Pocus. I've never even is seen that. Is it because that. the witches have sweet eyebrows? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can we not talk about eyebrows? Eyebrows? Eyebrow trends? What's up? What's new? the feather trend? Can we actually do the feather trend with your eyebrows? I got thick ones. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We just split them down the middle. Braided? What about that? How about that wavy trend? How would you even braid braid? your eyebrows? Oh, I don't like it. I'm pretty sure that was Photoshop. Wavy freaks me out. I don't know. I I actually have one eyebrow, and I just decide to split it into two. I don't even do it. Good trend. The next eyebrow trend is going to be the unibrow. We're bringing it back. Oh, boy. I'm going to be a stud. I tell you (laughs) this right now. Yeah. Jenna, I'm just saying. I know. I'm going to be looking like a stud with that new iPhone X. iPhone X? iPhone 10, right? The iPhone 10, I guess. What happened to 9? 
It was so good. It skipped over the nine. Oh, <laughs> all right. I just okay. don't get how they released the iPhone eight and the iPhone X like basically at the same time. All right. What's the point of that? Ah, uh, make more money. Uh, but that doesn't make sense when you make more money if you separated it. It's Apple. That's true. Apple does make sense. They're always releasing new things. I'll tell you, I'll ask you one thing. What kind of iPhone, or what kind of phone do you guys have? I got the LG V10 right now. Okay, all right. So you're not an iPhone user. I have an oh, iPhone. iPhone. iPhone? iPhone. I have an iPhone, too. So three, <laughs> three out of four, I'm, I think we're relying on them. Like they, they can do whatever is. they want. We'll buy it eventually, <laughs> probably. No. Um, probably not. Not for $1,000. It's too much. And we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Childhood coming back again. Drake and Josh. Now it's Brenda Song and Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. What is he? Was he in uh, Home Alone? Home Alone. Uh, what was he in Home Alone? Yeah. 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 And wasn't he arrested for something? Mm, I heard he yeah. did some, like, something bad very things. sketchy. He did Definitely some bad stuff. Not he did some bad stuff. For the best one. So why is Brenda Song? That's like. I, She's giving him a chance. Brenda, wh- who's Brenda Song? Uh, London Tipton from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. She wasn't very bright on the show. <laughs> Think it carries over? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Brenda. <laughs> Speaking of old shows, Netflix is getting rid of some of their lineups. One Tree Hill. One Tree oh, Hill no. and Friday Night Lights. Oh, no. My heart. I loved Friday Night Lights. Oh, Friday. One Tree Hill. Who are you? like Nathan? Team Nathan or Team Lucas? Team Lucas all the way. Until the last season, because then he got <laughs> He's got ugly. Yeah. Did you not see him in the last episode? I'm gonna jump off the bandwagon here and just say that I liked Friday Night Lights better, anyways. So. I've never actually Friday watched Night. either of them, but I know yeah. someone was really upset about you One Tree Hill getting out, getting off of next Netflix. They were like, "Oh, I'm never gonna make it past season six, episode three. <laughs> well, My you're never gonna make over. it past episode, episode one. one. So uh, can or you? Or any? Can you yeah. love what you never had? Hmm. You never know. Philosophical Maybe. thoughts. Ooh, Kids in the tank. Getting yeah. deep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, man. Another show that they actually bring back, That's So Raven spinoff. Have you guys seen it all? Honestly, I've never watched it before. That's So Raven never. or the spinoff? Both. Either? That's So Raven was part of my childhood. Yes, a big part. At least big part of your childhood? <laughs> yeah. Did you relate to Raven Simone? <laughs> yeah. Can you see visions? <laughs> Can you see the future? Oh, snap. Oh, no. <laughs> she actually saw Into the Future. Like, that was the premise of the show. Sure, I. Yeah. She could, like, okay. see it. But only, like, a day or an hour or so into the future. And then, like, it always just backfired anyway. Right. Yeah. She should have just done nothing. The show's premise was very simple. <laughs> kind of like Final Destination, right? But, I've never seen Final Destination. Maybe. I'm going to stick with it, and oh. that'll be it. All right. <laughs> and that'll be it for the podcast. I mean... Thank you for listening to Kids in the Tank, everybody. Uh, make sure you tune in next week for our next guest, Ralph Freitag, the former CEO of Gander Mountain and QSR. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. Thank you all again for listening. Uh, Oscar, uh, Marissa, Jenna, and Seth signing off. A one, a two, a three, boom! boom. <laughs> to learn more about BizTank and this podcast, check out our website at genevasupply.com backslash BizTank or head over to our Facebook pages. 